The UK, Japan and Italy are teaming up to build a next-generation fighter jet that uses artificial intelligence. Now, in a joint statement, the three countries said that the project would accelerate their advanced military capabilities at a time of rising threats and aggression worldwide. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak launched the first major phase of the so-called Global Combat Air Programme. He underscored the project's importance for Britain's security, but also its role in job creation at a time of economic uncertainty. The new warplane is expected to enter service by 2035. It will showcase the latest technology from each partner, and that includes stealth capacity, advanced sensors and artificial intelligence. The Pentagon has issued its backing for the program, but the project is currently set to proceed without the assistance of the United States. That's the world's preeminent warplane maker. For more, Julia Chapman joins us live now from London. Julia, this new jet, it's being seen as a replacement for Britain's Typhoon fighters. How significant, though, of a boost is it going to be for the country's air defence capabilities? This is being billed as the fighter jet of the future, a really ambitious project between these three countries uh, to build a fighter jet that can tackle threats that will be coming towards these countries in the years to come. It is going to be uh, a stealth fighter jet. Uh, speed stealth will be obviously a big focus, but it also will have AI uh, capabilities as well as uh, the potential to be automated without the help of a pilot if the pilot were to come under under uh, excess stress. Uh, this is certainly being uh, seen as uh, the next generation of fighter jets. It will come into use from 2035, or that is the aim at least, uh, and it will run alongside the Typhoon for about five years before those are decommissioned in 2040, and Tempest will take over here in the UK uh, for the Royal Air Force. But certainly, uh, this is being seen as a really big moment uh, in the defence industry. This is uh, the UK trying to make its own fighter jets, not necessarily compete with the United States, but show that Britain also has seriously ambitious uh, defence capabilities as well. Uh, the Tempest will also work alongside F-35 fighter jets, which the UK also uses, of course, those are U.S. technology, and they are expected to be entirely NATO compatible. So we'll uh, be working alongside some of Britain's allies in Europe and beyond. Julia, it's an almost unlikely trio of partners. But what does this partnership tell us about Britain's evolving alliances? It is certainly unusual to hear uh, the UK, Italy and Japan all working together, but we are told that reflects what these three countries are able to bring to the table. They all have different areas of expertise. This was actually announced four years ago as a partnership between British and Italian defence uh, companies to build these jets. Now Japan is getting involved. Uh, that certainly does reflect Japan's expertise in some of the digital areas that will be a big focus for this project but also in the UK's strategy as it looks increasingly towards the East uh, for its defence capabilities. Uh, we heard this morning from Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, uh, who says that the security of the Euro-Atlantic and Indo-Pacific regions are indivisible. So this is really a, a wider part of the UK's strategy, looking at the East, looking to counter China in many ways. And it comes as Britain is preparing to unveil its uh, next uh, edition of the integration review. That's an overall strategy uh, in the areas of defence, security and foreign policy. It's expected to have a pretty big emphasis on China, which so far Prime Minister Sunak has been describing uh, as a systemic challenge rather than as a threat. It's possible that language could change when the integrated review comes out, but this is definitely part of the UK increasingly looking east, increasingly looking to partner with countries like Japan, which for its part hasn't really been cooperating in the defence sphere with anyone other than the United States since the end of World War II. So this is a pretty significant moment from, from both sides of this partnership. Julia, thank you very much for that. Julia Chapman, they're reporting live from London. Japan is riding the global trend of boosting its military budget amid regional risks from China, North Korea and tensions in the Taiwan Strait. But despite its lofty plans, Tokyo is currently struggling to secure funding as it remains saddled with a heavy debt burden. 
Our Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has ordered the government to earmark around $315 billion for the upcoming five-year midterm defence build-up plan and lift defence spending to 2% of its GDP within five years from the current 1%. Or taking Japan's annual defence budget to more than 11 trillion yen, that is $80 billion, double the current budget. Japan now has the world's third largest military budget after the United States and China at their current levels. There are reports the government is already planning to raise defence spending by $7.34 billion to around $64 billion. That is in just the next fiscal year. More money will be spent on procuring ammunition and developing long-range missiles. The government is trying to secure additional funding sources around $30 billion around beyond pardon me, 2027. Most of this will come from spending cuts and tapping budget reserves and non-tax revenue. Tax hikes will provide the rest. Local media opinion polls suggest the public is divided over the defence spending plan. Many people want the government to prioritise the surging costs of living. A boosting military spending could further strain Japan's public debt, which already stands at more than twice the size of its economy. The government and the ruling coalition will decide on concrete measures by year-end.